How are you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you are watching Nature Now. So the world of bees and wasps is very intricate and I'm only going to just touch base on some of the main characteristics between the two and why I love them so much. Let's get going. Bees and wasps are part of a larger group known as Hymenoptera. That group includes bees, wasps, sawflies, and ants. But today we're just focusing on the bees and the wasps. Let's start out by talking about bees first. Now, Bees generally tend to appear soft and fuzzy. They have two pairs of wings. Their bodies generally look a little bit fatter and blunter at the abdomen in comparison to wasps and hornets. Their legs are usually thicker than wasp legs and often have baskets used for collecting pollen. There are also branched comb-like structures on the forelegs in which they use for grooming, usually to get the pollen off their antenna and faces. Of course, bees might be famous for producing honey, but let me tell you something. There are over 20,000 species of bee in the world, and there's only one group responsible for making honey, the honeybees, known as the Apidae family. A big difference between bees and wasps is the fact that bees feed on nectar and pollen and therefore are extremely important pollinators. While collecting nectar and pollen, their bodies end up being covered in pollen, and this results in the fertilization of other flowers as they continue to perform their task of collecting. Bees play such an important role as pollinators that they're actually responsible for affecting 50 to 80 percent of the world's food supply. Wow! Bees and wasps are of course equipped with large compound eyes. Bees are also pretty famous for making wax, which wasps can't do. Bees use that wax for making their houses, you know, their hives and stuff. So that's pretty important for them. Not all bees live in wax hives though. There's a lot of species that will burrow into wood or even burrow into the ground. Like wasps, they're actually solitary species of bee and social species of bee, such as the honeybees. They will form great big colonies that can actually survive and overwinter during the cold months. Wasps, their colonies don't survive the winter months. There are a ton of different types of bee. You've got the honeybees, little sweat bees, digger bees, bumblebees, big old carpenter bees, and many, many other types of bee. So, you know bees and wasps can sting us, right? But it's only the females that can do so because their stingers are actually modified egg-laying organs. The males don't have them. Bee stingers have a barb on them, and when they go into soft human skin, they get stuck. When the bee leaves, that pulls the stinger out, and attached to that stinger is their digestive system, so they die shortly afterwards. Wasps and hornets don't have a barb on their stingers, which allows them to sting us more than once if they decide to. So now we're moving on to wasps and hornets. The reason why I'm including hornets is because hornets are just another type of wasp. When you look at wasps, you'll see that they have a lot less hair on their bodies, which gives them a shinier appearance. Their abdomens are also pointier than that of bees, especially when you compare them to honeybees and bumblebees. Wasps also have thinner legs than bees. One, they don't have those special combs on their forelegs for getting off the pollen, and two, they're also lacking those special pollen baskets on the rear legs. Many members of the wasp group have a thin waist known as a petiole, and it's found between the first and second segments of the abdomen. As bees are, their two pairs of wings are held together by special hooks and tend to move as one. Some wasp species have no wings at all, 
like the cow killers, aka the velvet ants. But they're not ants, they're just a special type of wasp, and I love them. There are a lot of wasps that are omnivores, but they prefer nectar over pollen. Some species are strictly predators, opting only for meat, and they actually keep the insect world and arachnid populations in check. The majority of wasp species are actually solitary, and furthermore, many of them are parasitoidal, meaning they lay their eggs on or in insects. Yeah. Solitary wasps will parasitize on nearly every type of pest insect out there, which makes them very valuable for agriculture, and they are a biological form of pest control. Social wasps will build a new nest every spring to start out a new colony. They can also have pretty complex societies with different cast members similar to those of bees and ants. Unlike bees, which usually use wax to make their hives, wasps make their hives out of paper, which consists of chewed up wood pulp mixed with saliva, and those nests can sometimes get quite large. Sometimes their nests can be found in walls, in trees, or underground. Hornets' nests are often aerial, up in trees and hanging from objects. Hornets and wasps might not be as famous for pollinating plants as bees happen to be, but they're still responsible for pollinating a lot of plants. In fact, good side note, wasps are the main pollinators of daffodils. Wasps and hornets are generally bolder than bees, and they're a bit more aggressive, especially when they're reaching the end of their lifespan. They don't really feel like working much anymore. They get a little aggressive, and they're all about stealing food if they need to. As a whole, the wasp and hornet group has more powerful venom than the bee group does. There are over 100,000 species of wasp, and just in my locale alone, there are a lot of varieties. Some of them include paper wasps, yellow jackets as we all know, bald-faced hornets, mud daubers, spider wasps, the ichneumon group, which is really unique looking and pretty impressive when you look at them, digger wasps, and many, many more. Now, I just said that wasps and hornets are a bit more aggressive than bees, and that is true, but that doesn't make them really mean. Like all animals, they'd rather avoid a fight than to get into one, and they do so by giving you plenty of warning signs and body language. And they're like, hey, you know, you're getting too close, or you're messing with me, I'm going to defend myself by stinging you. And in most cases, it's actually kind of rare to get stung by these creatures unless they're standing on their home or too close to it or doing something very noisy with a lot of vibration right next to them. Then they'll come out. Hornets also generally tend to swarm more often than wasps and bees do if they're in attack mode. So, there you have it. I hope by watching this video you learned a couple cool things about bees and wasps and see that they're actually very important members of the ecosystem and deserve to be here just like everything else. Maybe you don't want them building a nest on your front porch or underneath your car, but as long as they do it out in the wild, I hope you're cool with that now. But like I said earlier, throughout the years I have fallen in love with the Henoctridae group. Bees, wasps, ants, it doesn't matter. Throughout years of close observation, and in some cases interaction, not that I recommend that, I found these creatures to often be cute, very beautiful, and elegant when you look at them. And I can't wait to find more species out there and upload videos for you guys to see. So once again, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.